Thank you everyone for attending this session on the gamma knife image distortion analysis with the Quasar Grid 3D. So just so you actually have a face to put to this disembodied voice speaking, I'm Joanne and I've recently come abroad to Modus QA as their new application specialist. Recently, I completed my Master's of Science in Medical Biophysics at the University of Western Ontario, where my research was primarily focused on the application of multimodality imaging in neurological and cardiovascular diseases. Currently, I'm a bit more focused on clinical applications, but my other areas of focus also include customer communications as well as some sales and marketing. So just some background information about this QA. We are located in London, Ontario, Canada, where we specialize in the manufacturing of high quality QA phantoms for advanced radiotherapy and medical imaging. So we have actually been in the business for over 20 years now. And as a result of this, there are currently over 5,000 Quasar Phantoms in use around the world today, covering almost 3,000 different treatment centers. And displayed on your screen is a very small subset of our products, to which maybe some of you have seen before or even used in the past. And from just this representative sample, we can see that our catalog of phantoms do span a very large variety of QA solutions. Some specializing in the targeting QA, some in motion QA, some in 3D dot symmetry solution, and as well as MRI or CT geometric distortion devices, one of which will be the subject of our talk today. But it should be noted that no matter the QA device or product, most importantly, we're actually very committed to working with businesses in order to provide them the best solution on the market for their QA needs. Here at Modus, we firmly believe that it's only with a very strong collaborative relationship with medical physicists can we develop proper tools that will help them fulfill their responsibilities with the utmost confidence. And as a natural consequence of this, to provide the patients the best possible outcomes. So like I have mentioned before, the subject of this webinar is image distortion analysis with our Quasar Grid 3D Phantom. Within this webinar, we'll be going through a quick overview of the geometric distortion, focusing on its importance in SRS planning and treatment and its downstream effects on patient outcomes. We will also be highlighting the current methods of distortion mitigation, as well as some of the factors to consider during that process. Thereafter, we will chat a little bit about the Quasar Grid 3D Phantom in itself, focusing on the Phantom design and the key physical features that allows for that high resolution imaging while still being easily integratable into any QA workflow. Later on, we would then speak on our highly versatile software platform, which works in tandem with our Phantom in order to provide that high accuracy control point detection while still minimizing user uncertainty. Thereafter, we will follow that up with a short software demo where we will walk through all the features from the point of view of a new user, all the way from data upload to distortion calculation and analysis to the enhanced 3D tools for graphical visualization. So stereotactic radio surgery crucially depends on imaging to deliver high doses of radiation precisely to small intracranial targets. And thus, it can be said that efficacy of SRS is therefore critically dependent on the precision and accuracy of its image-guided targeting system. And this is actually in turn defined by the geometric accuracy of those images themselves, and as well as the extent to which the target and normal structures can be visualized. And although the geometric accuracy of CT imaging is already well established, making it the gold standard of imaging modalities in radiotherapy applications, its relatively poorer soft tissue contrast actually seems to complicate target identification and contouring. This is of particular importance of the brain, where small inaccuracies of even less than one millimeter in target localization can make the difference between successful treatment and part mortality. And as such, the addition of magnetic resonance imaging to the workflow actually revolutionized SRS, as it provides a high resolution imaging modality that is capable of far superior soft tissue contrast, making it far easier for medical physicists and clinicians to distinguish between tumor borders and normal tissue. 
And it is this ability to identify the precise tumor location is why MRR imaging is being increasingly popularized in radiosurgery applications. However, MRI, like all imaging modalities, is not without its faults. And geometric distortion stemming from either patient caused or system inherent discrepancies can actually alter patient anatomical structure and image intensity. And ultimately, it, this entirely alters the original benefit stemming from MRI in the first place. And for instance, we can actually see here in this series of images that were adapted from a study by Tribeller and L in 2016. And so within the first image, we can see a T1 weighted uncorrected MRI image of a patient with a tumor within the brain with the ROI outlined in pink. And upon applying an in-house distortion correction algorithm brought to you by the study, we can actually see that the tumor volume outlined in green substantially differs from the tumor volume outlined originally. And as such, it is quite apparent that discrepancies in geometric accuracy can actually greatly affect downstream patient outcomes by potentially causing geographical misses or improper radiation dose delivery. And as such, there is still a continuous hunt for a better distortion quantification and correction techniques, as it will allow for a more precise SRR's treatment and resultingly improve patient outcomes. To account for this, vendors of MRI systems typically supply the user with correction algorithms in an attempt to mitigate sources of systematic distortion. Ideally, these correction techniques will be sufficient in eliminating this image distortion. However, this is not necessarily the case. Reportedly, residual distortion values of up to 3 mm are still routinely measured in these systems post-vendor corrections. And these 2 to 3 mm, if gone unassessed, can lead to severe downstream implications to patient outcomes. Consequently, physicists are now routinely incorporating additional geometric accuracy assessments into their QA protocols in an effort to identify some of these distortions. Common practices include continuously altering their image sequences until one with minimum geometric distortion is identified. And as a result of this, MODIS, specifically with the Quasar Grid 3D Phantom, strives to aid in this geometric accuracy assessment by providing a high-resolution phantom and tool to help these physicists in this identification and quantification of geometric distortion. It is our aim that with this phantom, physicists will feel a bit more confident in the accuracy and precision of our SRS treatment delivery by better understanding their planning system spatial accuracy. The Quasar Grid 3D Phantom is a full 3D imaging QA phantom that assesses MR and CT geometric image distortion in all three orthogonal imaging planes simultaneously. Anatomically, the phantom consists of an acrylic shell that is filled with stacks of acrylic plates. Each of those plates consists of an interlinking grid made out of intersecting very thin 1.5mm channels that forms the bulk of the Grid 3D structure. However, unlike a lot of our competitors who uses control point information derived from the absence of MR signal around those channels, we have instead drilled 1.5 millimeter holes into each of those grid lines intersections in order to fill form our control points. And in total, there are exactly 2002 control points lying exactly 10 millimeters apart from one another in the grid 3D fandom that can be used to assess geometric distortion. And considering that the phantom dimensions comprise of just 11 by 13 by 14 centimeters, it is definitely a very densely packed phantom that provides optimal information for its size. As much of this phantom is hollow, which includes the channels, chambers, and most importantly, the control points themselves, the phantom is also filled with a two micromolar solution of D-gas deionized copper sulfide aqueous solution. This is a MRI contrast agent, and therefore upon imaging the phantom, a positive signal can be yielded at each of these control points, which gives us positive information that is correlating to IEC standards. 
So knowing these phantom attributes, what does that actually mean for our physicists and their QA procedures? Well, as we've spoken about previously, the phantom encompasses a relatively large volume of 11 by 13 by 14, which well encompasses the average size of the human head. And in addition, it is also specially designed to be able to accurately and securely mount within the gamma knife lexic coordinate G-frame. And as a result of this, the grid 3D is able to process images and assess distortion on both their MR and CT systems using SNRS planning, as it is able to fit within both the lexic MR and CT indicators. And however, while the fiducial box indicators are useful in accurate image coloristration, the grid 3D is also capable of distortion analysis without any indicators at all, and being directly registered to the CT or cone beam CT images. And as a result of this, the grid 3D is also fully capable of being used independent of the G-frame on the ICON platform. So the grid 3D phantom is also able to offer high resolution geometric accuracy as a result of the manufacturer specifications of our phantom. So within each phantom, there's a dense matrix of 1.5 millimeter signal generating channels that creates exactly 2002 control points. And as a result of our specialized manufacturing process, each of those control points are confirmed to be within 0.1 millimeter manufacturing tolerance, making it very, very accurate within a very compact lightweight size. It should also be noted that the control points of this phantom are hollow, which means they can be filled with MRI contrast agents, and therefore they're able to generate a positive MRI signal that is captured with a very high degree of accuracy, a detail that's in accordance to IEC standards. In addition to this, we at Modus are also aware of the long-term limitations of the phantom, and primarily that phantoms in general over time will eventually deform as the phantom material will break down or is even enlarged by the contrast solution. And so this phantom we ended up using acrylic because not only is it relatively inflexible and is arguably less conformable to temperature and pressure than its alternative phantom material counterparts, our specialized manufacturing process can actually be used to minimize material-specific sources of deformation, allowing this acrylic phantom to have long-lasting confidence in phantom geometric stability. We have briefly touched on previously, the Grid 3D Phantom is designed to make the QA workflow more efficient and more accessible, and in general attempts to make the life of the medical physicist just a little bit easier. And that is one of the reasons why the Grid 3D Phantom is specifically designed for a simple, easy, and more importantly, reproducible insertion into the Lexel G-frame, as it will help minimize struggles with phantom alignment, thus making it a rather simple addition to your QA workflow. In addition to this, the Grid 3D software also allows physicists to work on their distortion data directly within the Gamma Plan frame of reference, instead of requiring them to work on it in DICOM or any other spaces. As such, the physicists will have the opportunity to import the associated LGP file directly into the software, allowing for increased confidence in the resultant distortion vector field as it is contextually significant now. And lastly, the onboard automated image processing software allows for the rapid distortion analysis, customizable visualization, as well as reporting of distortion data. And this, in general, is just allows for an easier way to interpret that data by allowing the physicist to choose a data display format that best fits their decision-making style. And it is actually for those reasons that Mr. Ian Paddock, a consulting physicist with many years of experience in gamma knife system commissioning, recommends the Quasar Grid 3D Phantom for its geometric distortion assessments because of its simplicity in design in combination with its fast and understandable operations that make it an easy and integratable way into any QA protocol. So now let's move on to a little bit more information about the Grid 3D software. So upon purchasing the Grid 3D Phantom, you will also be provided with an unlimited license to the Quasar Grid 3D Image Distortion Analysis Software System. The software license supports two scanning systems, meaning that you will be able to use it on multiple imaging scanners, maybe one MRI and another CT, and be able to compare and track the image distortion simultaneously of those two systems at the exact same cost.
So in addition to being cost effective, what else is good about the Grid 3D software? Well, the Grid 3D software uses an advanced automated control point detection algorithm that works in conjunction with our specified specific channel detection methods, allowing for advanced control point detection. The specialized algorithm was designed to optimize this control point detection while also minimizing errors or data loss from image misalignment or even micro bubble formation. This is actually an upgrade from our previous version in order to account for any micro bubble accumulation at the edges of the channel as seen in the usual grid 3D phantoms. Similar to competitive geometric distortion software, the Grid 3D is also able to provide that quick and easy pass or fail check in which distortion is compared to a set but often user changeable threshold. This table down here is set up for easy readout and is able to summarize that distortion information in the X, Y, and Z axes in addition to absolute distortion. However, in addition to this, the Grid 3D also aims to offer total data transparency without geometric distortion analysis. For instance, physicists are also able to freely access the calculated geometric distortion for each of those 2002 individual control points that you can see on the right hand side here. Within this view, physicists are able to take advantage of this individual control point evaluation system in order to streamline their distortion analysis procedures. For instance, physicists are able to easily identify and localize the distorted region, letting you know exactly where and be able to visualize where to start and concentrate all your distortion mitigation offers. And so MODIS also recognizes that the imaging systems or even data transfer systems are not perfect. And if unchecked, could possibly result in distortion calculation inaccuracies and adversely affects treatment systems specificity and patient outcomes. And thus, all of our geometric distortion output in both the summary table right here and for each of these 2002 control points are all accompanied by a, a detection uncertainty value as calculated by a standard deviation. The detected control points can be manually tuned by the user as desired in order to increase reporting accuracy. The Grid 3D software also offers easy to read data evaluation tools. For instance, physicists are able to improve workflow efficiency by using the intuitive software features designed to aid in your image distortion evaluation. For instance, there are multiple charting and reporting options that displays the distortion and statistical data in any way that allows the physicist to make a more informed decision. Our software also allows physicists to work with either one data set at a time in the single series view or even establish a comparison across multiple data set systems or even look at it chronologically with our multiple series view, which we can go in depth a little bit later during the software demonstration. And examples of meaningful data representation options include the statistical table that we saw previously in which distortion can be reported as dx, dy, dz, or cumulative dr, as well as their calculated uncertainty values. In addition to this, we also have the phantom alignment deviations in which you can compare your alignment to the DICOM isocenter, which can be used to evaluate the 100, 100, 100 space. And lastly, we also have several reporting options, as we can see here, that can be used to visualize distortion data in methods such as histograms, a distortion status plot, or even cumulative percentage below a certain adjustable threshold. Additionally, as this is indeed a 3D phantom, there are also enhanced visualization tools that allows physicists to better understand the nature of the system's geometric distortion in a 3D format. So for instance, we have these heat maps here that allows physicists to visualize quantitatively the distortion and uncertainty data as customizable heat map, with red indicates regions of higher distortion, and we can gradually see as it gets to the isocenter point, there is less distortion available. 
In addition to this, there are also customizable graphic displays that allows you to analyze the amount of distortion at any specific control point at any time that is accompanied by the uncertainty value detection within this 3D space. If you were to simply click on one of these points here, it would tell you that uncertainty information as well as the distortion value e quite easily. So we've spoken a lot about what this version of the Grid 3D can actually do. So now let's see it in action with our software demonstration. So the goal of this demo is to walk you through the software system from the perspective of a physicist running their system QA testing after the acquisition of MRI, CT, or Combi CT images with the Grid 3D Phantom. So just to orient ourselves here, this is the initial view of the software upon opening the program where the window is split into two components. So you have the top panel here where all your distortion information is displayed. This is controlled by the view navigation buttons along the left hand side, which we will go more in depth later. And the bottom panel here is filled with the data browser. And this is actually where all your acquired image series are stored and later processed. And if you do have quite a few data sets imported at once, like I do, you can easily filter and sort them based off the image name, modality, whether or not they have been transformed into kind of pan space by simply just right clicking and then selecting the sort by function. Now, to actually begin analyzing our geometric distortion, we must first import our data set. So the Grid 3D software actually allows physicists to process distortion information, regardless of if your images are a series of DICOM or if they are a single LGP file. And so for simplicity's sake, you can simply just drag and drop your file from your file explorer like this into your data browser. However, an alternate suggestion is to use this button here in which you can import your DICOMs series as an entire folder by simply selecting this button. Or you can import your single LGP file image as a single file. However, for the sake of timing, we will be using one of the already imported files for the rest of the demonstration. So the processing of distortion information is actually extremely easy in the Grid 3D software because all you have to do is simply select one of the data sets here and then press the process button along the left hand side in order to start. And so you'll actually be able to see in real time the current engine status as well as the processing that's going on to your data. And as you can see, this distortion analysis program is completely automated and is also relatively fast depending on the complexity of your data. And so once this has actually been completed, your data set will show this analyzed button along here along with the confidence rating. So the confidence rating is a feature we have added in order to help end users quantify the exact percent of control points that were detected. So this feature was actually designed to help end users recognize if any control points were not properly detected as a result of, for instance, an object was left in the bore, thus causing image artifact. So this is actually particularly useful because while you can continue with distortion analysis with some control points misdetected, you do run into the issue of perhaps having an artificially inflated amounts of distortion in real results. And thus, it may make it look like there is far more distortion than there actually is. And so in order to mitigate this type of scenario, in circumstances with the confidence rating falls below an acceptable threshold in which we have set as 95% as the default, but it should be noted that users can change this rating to anything you want, which we will touch on later, the user will be easily notified as this entire value will be flagged in red for easy identification. And so moving on, once this series has been processed, the distortion data can then be visualized and evaluated in a couple of different views. So the Grid 3D actually offers four different methods of viewing your data in which you can flip between them using the navigation view buttons along the left hand side here. And so first up is the single series view. And physicists can use this to display a summary of all distortion information associated with a single data set selected, which is the one highlighted in yellow down here. 
And so, at the top is the summary statistics table, and where the magnitude of distortion in each vector component, as well as the absolute distortion, dr, is displayed. And so you actually have access to the mean absolute value of each vector component, as well as the uncertainty associated, portrayed as standard deviation, the maximum value of the distortion within each axis, as well as the percentage of distortion values above a specifically set threshold. And like the confidence rating before it, if that distortion data exceeds a certain threshold or magnitude, which is displayed in this gray top bar here, it would then be highlighted in red, which is considered a fail. So, for instance, if we look at this data set here, we can see that the distortion in all axes individually looks pretty good. But we should know that there is a 41% of vectors do seem to have an absolute distortion of more than 1.5 millimeters, and thus indicating to physicists that perhaps a more in-depth evaluation is needed in this situation. And so physicists can use this chart as a really fast and easy pass or fail way to assess the validity of their system's distortion. However, if you do want a bit more information about the distribution of your image's distortion, we also do offer four charting options so you can see your data being displayed graphically. The first of them is a line graph that shows the Q then click it, it shows the line graph that shows the cumulative percentage of distortion vectors and select magnitude. So this could be potentially useful in determining visually how many of your vectors fall within a certain distortion magnitude. And the second here is a histogram in which a similar idea is portrayed but in a different different graphical format. And here your vectors are being binned according to the magnitude of distortion. So from these graphs, you can see that a majority of these vectors do have zero millimeters of distortion associated with them. And perhaps by using this view, physicists can actually gain a better understanding of the distribution distortion in their images. And it should also be noted that you can change the number or size of your bins depending on what you would like. And so the Grid 3D software also offers the ability to view how your distortion is changing along the length of a phantom with each of these positions underneath on the x-axis matching the plane of a control point in the actual phantom. So this is actually a pretty good tool to evaluate the extent of distortion in each axis as you move further and further away from the 100 and 100 point, as indicated by this 100 spot here. And I also do want to point out to you that you can switch between evaluating this in either gamma plan or DICOM space, depending on what you like. And as well, if you actually hoover your mouse on one of these bars here, let's pick one with a bit more distortion right here, you can actually visually see the distortion details for each particular slice as heat maps, as blue is negative and red is positive distortion. Additionally, if you wanted to see this distortion as a function of distance from the isocenter in a slightly different format, you can also have the option of viewing it as a scalar plot, where each of the points is a single distortion measurement. And again, you can still switch between the isocenter and the 100 hunter space depending on what you would like. And of course, for the sake of record keeping and easy analyses, you can simply enlarge all these graphs by just clicking on them, and you can even save them. Let's wait. You can even save them as a .png image by simply clicking the save button here, or exporting it as a .csv file and then downloading it into any spreadsheet application if you do want to run your own analyses on them. And so the last feature I want to touch upon in this view is this chart right here. And so this is the Grid 3D software's ability to detect and report discrepancies between the detected center location and the isocenter of the phantom relative to DICOM space. And as such, physicists can check phantom alignment quite easily with this table, because if there is indeed an offset, a beyond a reasonable limit, like we are seeing here, it is displayed in red. And so from this chart, we can see that there is a misalignment allowance threshold set at two millimeters with one degree of twist, but you can adjust it like any other threshold in this program and change it as you would like. 
So theoretically, if you were on a time crunch and you just wanted a really fast, easy, and quick way of checking geometric distortion, then theoretically, you can just import, process your image data, and then evaluate distortion in a matter of minutes by simply using this view. However, in addition to these summarized features, if you do have more than one scan or data set loaded and processed into the data viewer below, you can actually select this comparison view right here. And so the Grid3D software actually has the ability to compare the distortion of multiple data sets to one another, whether that be between images acquired on different scanners, different bandwidths, or even different pulse sequences, etc. And so this view typically consists of the same of some of the, the same graphical settings as the single series, but this time your distortion vector series are color coded as listed in the summary statistics table above and then all displayed together into a couple single graphs. So one potential avenue for the one potential avenue of use for this is the more efficient optimization of scan parameters. So for instance, in order to achieve the lowest distortion possible, let's say you acquire 10 images with the exact same sequences applied with the exception of changing the bandwidth. So we will just click on this view right here and it will automatically sort the data series and then graph it on this distortion versus bandwidth plot, and thus allowing you to quite easily compare and discern which bandwidth will actually minimize distortion the best. And so for the sake of brevity, we will not be touching upon the line graphs such as this view, nor the histogram view again, because they are essentially displaying data in the exact same manner as their counterparts in the single series view, but this time with multiple color co coordinate data point groups instead. And so let us jump directly into this one right here, which is simply displaying the number of distortion vectors at each distortion magnitude value as a line graph. So this view is actually this designed for physicists in order to be able to easily discern system performance differences between each scan, as each higher peak followed by a very steep drop off at the lower distortion values tend to represent significantly better performance compared to scans with a lower or wider curve. And this is because lower and wider curves usually mean more vectors have higher distortion. And lastly, there's also an option in this view to track phantom alignment across acquisitions. And as with this graph here, you can see that the detected centroid positions within millimeters of each data series being displayed, and thus allowing you to track the repeatability of your phantom positioning. Okay, now let's backtrack a little bit. Say you aren't exactly happy with the distortion results that you saw in this summary statistics table here, and you wish to see the more in-depth details of the distortion analysis with a, in a single data set series. And so you want to click this one here, which is your single series details view. And so the Grid 3D software actually offers the ability to see this associated distortion as well as the detection uncertainty of every single one of these 2002 control points. And if we were to press this button right here, pardon me, this is actually offers another visual for the user, and these are actually 2D image slices of the phantom in axial, coronal, and the sagittal points of view. And you are actually able to flip through these images and then look at the phantom in every plane by simply pressing these buttons right here. And this numbers are actually denoting where you are relative to the dimensions of the phantom in millimeters. So what's actually particularly interesting about this view here is the ability of the user to visualize the extent of this distortion in the form of a heat map by simply pressing this button right here, in which the color scheme of this heat map is currently being set at 4.5 to negative 4.5 millimeters. And therefore, after looking at this, you'll be able to identify points of relatively high distortion. You can click it and then afterwards be directed to where it is immediately in this 2D image. And so if you were to actually zoom in right here, 
you will visibly be able to see the difference between the detective control point, which is here, and the ideal location, which is where the grid lines would intersect. So theoretically, physicists would be able to go through all of these images, slice by slice, and evaluate the distortion in order to paint a more comprehensive, in-depth picture of what is going on before making an informed decision about how to mitigate for these discrepancies. However, if you were on the time crunch and you do not wish to look through all these image slices at this particular moment in time, the summary table below can actually provide you with a lot of information in order to guide you to points of significant distortion. So for instance, if we were to look at the maximum absolute deviation or max absolute maximum distortion magnitude here, you can simply click this button. Oh, it's already directing us here. But yes, it will direct you there immediately for your immediate description. So while there are several other features on this view, the last of which I want to highlight right now is the detection uncertainty heat map, which is this button right here. So this is actually designed to, v to work alongside the distortion heat map because it can be used to evaluate the accuracy of the distortion data presented at a certain control point. So for instance, if we go back to this point of particularly high distortion, right here, and then we flip back to the uncertainty map, we can see that the accuracy of detection for this specific control point is only 0.481, meaning that its detected location only has a possible deviation of 0.481 millimeters, making it highly likely that the difference in position we are seeing between the planning system image and the CAD or ground truth is most likely because of an MRI system distortion and not so much because of a control point detection error. And so we hope that the physicists can actually take advantage of the fact that these uncertainty values are viewable and quantifiable in order to feel just a little bit more confident in their distortion assessments, as that will also translate into being more confident in the accuracy of the SRS's treatment, accuracy actually being delivered. And so it should also be noted that in the off chance that the uncertainty is particularly large, you can also manually edit those points with this visual editing tool and then just place it into its correct positioning as such. And so next up is our 3D viewer which is this button here. Now, this view is actually quite popular among our users because it allows the user to visualize the phantom, the control points, and ultimately the distortion information in a 3D volumetric format. So typically, when you first enter the viewer, this is what you see, which is a dis 3D display of the grid 3D phantom and all its detected control points. And within this space, you can freely move it around, you can rotate it, you can adjust the planes with both the mouse as well as the shifts buttons up here. You can also adjust the window balance value and many others, all up to your interpretation. However, in addition to this 3D view, you can also go to the file name here and then select one of the different viewpoints out of this drop-down list, where there are many options of displaying the distortion component vectors in the X, Y, Z axes, as well as the uncertainty as 3D heat maps. So for now, let's select the R. So here we can actually see a heat map of absolute distortion in uh, these in a 3D display. And if we were to click on this bar here, we can also make it more visually colorful for better discernment. And so from this view, we can see that the highest regions of distortion are usually depicted in red and the lowest are found in blue. And you can adjust this window value easily so you can see a little bit more or less of this dis distortion distribution. And so from this image here, we can see that, the ov that overall the distortion seems to be graphically minimum, with most of the distortion measuring around 0.99 millimeters and below, with the exception of the corners and edges, which of course is expected as they are the furthest points away from the isocenter. 
And so seeing these regions of high distortion magnitude, users can also identify the magnitude of these high regions by simply clicking on that region. And then right afterwards in the left hand corner, it will be displaying not only the location of this high distortion value, but also the actual distortion in itself, which is 3.372 millimeters. And as a result of this, this distortion value can then be easily noted down for further analysis in the single series details view or for your own consideration. So another feature I wanted to take note of is this geometry manager in the right top corner, which is a series of rendered objects that can be overlaid onto the image as to also aid in 3D distortion evaluation and debugging. So let's bring everyone back to the original image for a moment. And so now let us pick the, this option saying model points as well as measure points. And let's zoom in here as well. And so by selecting these two options here, you're actually able to visually see the difference between the locations of the true model control points, which are these gray dots here as re rendered from the CAD model, and as well as the measured control points as well, which are the colored points. And these are rendered at, according to the grid 3D phantom imaging that we had on your planning system. And so it should also be noted that the measure control points are also color coded so that their distortion values are alike to that of their heat maps with regions of the highest distortion in red and the regions of lowest distortion in blue for easier identification. And so because of this, you can actually see a difference between the regions of which there is high distortion such as these green areas in which you have a quite a larger amount of misalignment between the control points and regions of slightly lower distortion in which you have these points almost overlapping one another. And so all in all, this is just another interesting tool that we hope physicists can use in order to better evaluate distortion ev distribution. So another feature that seems interesting to highlight within this geometry map is these splines. Let's just rotate it a little bit to get to a nice view. So upon selecting these options here, you are also able to view these splines, which are essentially interpolation that aids in the grid 3D's advanced control point detection algorithm. So typically in the ideal scenario where all the control points are properly detected, these splines are visibly straight as seen by these Y plane splines here, as their intersections were perfectly aligned with the detected control point intersections. However, in instances of distortion or even improper control point detection, these splines can eventually be warped. And as such, the spline images can actually be used as a reference in order to view the accuracy of your control point detection. Because if the splines are straight, then you're most likely doing something right. And okay, and so moving on, this is actually the reporting view that provides the end user with a concise and streamlined way to export your distortion information in a PDF report that could be potentially saved or even printed out for your own records. And so in order to really streamline this reporting process, the grid 3D software comes with a software with a template report option that includes the title, which is defaulted to the series name, the word report and the date there afterwards, and then the image acquisition summary, which can be changed, the uncertainty filters, if there's any applied, as well as the distortion data, which includes phantom alignment, as well as the many other distortion information and charts. So you do have the option of selecting or unselecting to include what you want in your report. And all of those functions can just be saved into your own report version and then saved into this software as well for just easy access next time. 
So the Grid 3D also has the ability to generate a report containing results for multiple data series at once. And you can do this by just simply selecting the ones you want to have reports for and then pressing this book or generate a PDF report function. And so the resultant PDF will just then be named and saved into your destination view folder for you to be viewed at any time. And so here is the resultant PDF. And you can look straight up in the first page. You have the report summary that includes the series name and whether or not they failed the distortion evaluation. The charts are included there afterwards for your use. And lastly, if you recall from the beginning of the demo, during the single series and the multi-series view, I did mention th that these thresholds, as well as the histogram settings, are all configurable. And this does remain true when you click on this settings tab. And so upon entering the settings view, there are quite a number of parameters that can be changed. The first I wanted to highlight is the storage location for your image data and results, as there is also an option to add a backup folder in case of any unforeseen technical difficulties that may occur. And additionally, you can also adjust those threshold settings right here, where each of those thresholds are denoting the limits that which you can categorize your distortion results at either passing or failing to meet the standards for either the MRI or, or CT. And it should also be noted that, that each of these threshold correcting options do correlate to evaluating one of the parameters we saw in the distortion summary statistics table or the phantom alignment table. And additionally, you can also change the number scale of the distortion heat maps by simply increasing or decreasing the upper and lower limits. And lastly, the pass or fail color displayed in each chart can also be customized. Let's say you find that red might be hard to see. Well, you can change it directly to pink and that will be immediately changed within your single series and all the other views. And so that pretty much concludes our software demonstration of the Grid 3D image analysis software system. And so please note that for the sake of brevity, some of the features were not outlined in this demonstration. So we do encourage both current and potential users to contact us at any time for further software inquiries. So thank you very much for listening. And so I appreciate your time and thank you very much for attending this image distortion analysis with the Quasar Grid 3D Phantom webinar. So please contact us at www.modusqa.com and I look forward to hearing from you and discussing our quality assurance options. So now we're just going to open the floor to any questions. Thank you very much.